As if being broken up with, abruptly discarded, wasn't painful enough. Being strung along by endless breadcrumbs from the avoidant just prolongs and deepens the pain, giving you constant false hope that the two of you are going to get back together, that this person realizes the mistake they made and they want you back. Unfortunately, there are reasons why avoidance will breadcrumb an ex, but most of them are not because they actually want to get back together. Now, there are some times where they regret the breakup to the point where they do want to get back together, and they are just very afraid of rejection, so they put out those little feelers to see if you take the bait, and then they want to get back together with you. But if they're not doing any of the work, the relationship is likely to end in the same painful way. Now, most of the time, however, when they breadcrumb, it's validation seeking. They want the validation from you. They want to know that you still want them. They want to know that you don't hate them. They want to know that you are still an available option for them, pining away for them, longing for them, just waiting for them to come back and choose you. And the breadcrumbing can come in various different forms liking your social media posts, watching your stories, sending the occasional, hey, how are you text message, being friendly and warm when they run into you in public. But then when you take the bait, notice most of the time they go cold. They disappear for days. And it's like, why did they reach out to me? Why did they message me? Why do they watch my stories and then just disappear? That's because this person is still deactivated. They're still an avoidant. They're avoiding that emotional closeness. They're avoiding commitment. They're avoiding being vulnerable, but they still want to know that you still want them. So when you take the bait, when you reach out, when you try to get with this person, you're validating them. You're letting them know that you are still an option and that you don't hate them. So that way they can feel better about themselves. This is a deeply insecure person. This is a person that relies on external validation to feel better about themselves. They don't know how to internally validate themselves. Self-esteem is quite low with most avoidance, even if they mask it. Now, they also don't want to face accountability for the way they hurt you. They know at some level that you're in pain, but if you validate them, you show them that you don't hate them, which means that they're not the bad guy, they didn't hurt you, which means they don't have to self-reflect on it or take accountability. It helps them get off the hook without having to face any of the consequences of what they did to you. When the avoidant breadcrumbs you, it's all about them. It's all about what they perceive that they feel, need, or want, that validation. They're not considering the impact that it has on the other person because they're only focused on themselves, just like in the breakup. They were only thinking of themselves and what they felt, needed, feared, or wanted in the moment. They're not really able or willing to consider the feelings of another person due to their own insecurities. Can that change? Of course it can. They can work on themselves, heal, become more secure, become more empathetic people. But what this is really showing is how selfish they are because they are wanting that validation but not even considering how that breadcrumbing might actually just hurt you worse and worse and make it harder for you to heal and move on. They're only thinking of themselves. Again, it's because of their insecurities, which goes back to childhood. Avoidance, especially dismissive avoidance, were emotionally neglected as children. Their parents or caretakers didn't give them the love and the nurturing in the way that they needed. Their feelings were routinely dismissed, actually often outright rejected. If you want to go be sad, be sad in your room. The message was sent. Their emotions weren't welcome. They learned to bottle it up. They learned to stuff it. They learned to avoid it because nobody showed them how to talk about feelings, process emotions, deal with stress. Well, that results in a person as an adult that feels unlovable because they weren't given the love and really doesn't know how to express themselves and is deeply afraid of it because they associate it with rejection and abandonment. Now, if you have a fearful avoidant, in addition to emotional neglect, they also experienced a chaotic household, a household that maybe even had some abuse of some sort. 
This creates insecurities as an adult. And in a sense, these insecurities can create trauma responses, but these responses can be quite selfish. They can be quite self-absorbed. And yes, they are still an adult who is capable of making their own decisions. So it's not like they can't completely help it. They do have the ability to choose different behaviors, but due to their own insecurities, they're not really all that willing to choose different behaviors, which results in selfish behaviors like breadcrumbing. When they're endlessly breadcrumbing you, it is a perfect opportunity to have and hold a boundary. Your boundaries being your limits of what you will and will not tolerate, what you want, don't want, what you need, don't need, and what you expect and don't expect. You can set that boundary and say, listen, I do care about you, but every time you reach out without any kind of purpose, it just reopens the wound for me. And it just makes that pain come back to the surface for me. So I need some space and time for myself to heal so I can heal that wound and move forward with my life. There you go. You set the boundary. You let them know that it's not okay to just breadcrumb you. You can even add a caveat. Please don't reach out unless it's with a purpose. So you're not slamming the door in their face if you don't want to. You can leave it open if that's what you genuinely want, or you can just set the firm boundary and say, please give me the space. And then if they don't respect the space, well, they've shown that they don't care about your boundary, then it would be appropriate to take action if you so choose, like blocking them, things like that. Because your healing is important. Your feelings are important. It's not just about them. It's not just about the validation that they want. Don't neglect your own feelings. Don't allow them to just string you along and prolong your pain. You wouldn't do that to them, and you deserve so much better than that. You really do. Don't sell yourself short.